Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of England. Welcome to my channel. Um, and today's video is about pride. Um, pride used to be seen as something that we would admire, really. When you think about pride, you work with pride, you dress with pride, you you produce work that you're proud of, and it can have a positive side to pride. But there's also the dark side to pride, the side that doesn't allow you to admit mistakes, forces you to lie, makes you feel embarrassed, makes you unaccountable. And so I'm going to be talking about the dark side of pride. Um, it happens in, you know, a lot of people from the Caribbean. They are very prideful and it can be their downfall in a lot of cases. They won't be seen doing certain things. They won't wear certain things. They don't want to be made a fool of. They don't want to be humiliated. They don't want to be embarrassed. And a lot of sometimes it can even bring out aggression. You know, like they'll say, oh, if you do something to make somebody feel small or humiliated, we'll kill you for that. You know, and how oh dare you? You know, if you if they feel embarrassed, you don't even have to deliberately embarrass them. But if they feel embarrassed or you have humiliated them, whether you intended to or not, it can cost you your life, especially in Jamaica. So that is the kind of pride I'm talking about. And where does it come from? Why is it so important? Why are people afraid to make mistakes? Why are people afraid to look stupid? And I think it goes back to whether or not when you're young, how criticised you were, how you were chastised for making mistakes, probably. It could stem from that. I was watching an advert this evening and I looked at the advert and a guy got out of the car and he started doing some funny dance and I'm like, what an idiot. You know what I mean? And then somebody says, well, he's getting paid for that. And I'm like, well, would you do that? Would you behave like that? No, I wouldn't, because I wouldn't want to get embarrassed. I'd feel like a fool. And that's what, you know, pride robs us of playfulness. It robs us of joy. It robs us of all the nice things that we could have if we could just relax, accept our mistakes except that we're not perfect, and just ro roll with it. But that's not what people do. People get angry. People feel embarrassed. They feel intimidated. And so they react in a negative way. A lot of um, domestic abuse situations happens because of pride. If a woman speaks to somebody in a certain way and that person doesn't feel as though she's talking to him in a way that, um, you know, makes him feel good, he can react in a way that's hostile or abusive. Because as far as he's concerned, she's damaged his pride. And that is when pride really needs to be looked at. They say pride comes before a fall. And pride is what causes a lot of our parents to lie, you know, because they didn't want us to know about their past, so they lied about it. It was pride. They didn't want to be embarrassed about what they'd done. They didn't want to feel embarrassed about the mistakes that they'd made. But we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. And so, so what if you've made a mistake? So what if you're made to look stupid? This is how you grow. When you can make mistakes and own up to them, that is how you grow. And what happens over a period of time is that you'll make a mistake and it won't even bother you. When I used to make mistakes at work, I used to think to myself, oh, my God, I felt so stupid. Now, if I make mistakes, I'll own up to it, number one. I did A, B, C, D and E. You know, and it's not like, so what are you going to do about it? It's just like, you know, you can't kill me. You can't, you know, nothing, You there's nothing you're going to do that's going to really hurt me. 
you're in a professional environment, hopefully. You're not at school, like when you was at school and you made a mistake in the classroom. You might get kids making fun of you or bullying you, but you're not at school now. You're an adult. So therefore, people making fun of you is very unlikely unless they're very immature. So you should be able to own up to your mistakes now and feel good about it and feel, yeah, I made a mistake. So what? Tomorrow's another day. I can correct it and I can let them know I've corrected it and I can put things in place to make sure I don't make that mistake again. And that is what it's about. That is what you call maturity. That's how you evolve. So anyway, my notes. Um, pride is not to be confused with pride events that are about human rights, empowering LGBTQ plus individuals to reclaim the rights and freedoms they are denied about fighting shame and social stigma. So that's not the pride I'm talking about. I'm referring to the pride people have in the Caribbean in particular. I think people from the Caribbean are more prideful than anybody else. And that's why I want to talk about that because a lot of the reason why people die or people are shot and killed is due to pride. You know, if a man, okay, suppose even like in the drug dealing, you think it's about money. It's not necessarily about money. What it can be about is that if you, if a man says to you, look, I want you to go and sell them drugs here for me. And the man takes the drugs and he doesn't sell them for you and then go and bought in business. That man feels as though you're taking the pee out of him. You're embarrassing him. You're making him look like a, a idiot, a little boy. And so it's his pride that will make him come and shoot you and kill you or get somebody else to shoot you. Sometimes even a look, you know, sometimes when a man will look on a man and, you know, like he's looking down at him or something, demeaning. And he would say, well, I look for me like that, but it's why well, in next thing you know, I'm take out a gun and shut him. Why? Because he is humiliating him. He's making him feel less than. And it's his pride that takes over. A lot of the deaths in Jamaica, I bet you, 80 to 90% of them are based on pride. Somebody's done something to someone to hurt their pride. It's ridiculous. They need to grow up, grow a pair of balls and just be able to communicate in a way that doesn't have to result in death. So, pride. The pride that I'm talking about is an innate and excessive fear of being embarrassed. Or like I said, humiliated. It's what makes them kill if somebody steps on their pride or makes them look foolish. It's what makes them beat up their women when their women make them look small. It's what makes them lie about their past. It's what makes them um, deny what they've done wrong because they feel embarrassed. It's an intense feeling of humiliation. And it's like low grades at school. They prefer to bunk school than to face being mimicked by fellow students or fellow pupils. And what is it, it, it's kind of um, perpetuated because if you don't go to school, then, you know, you don't end up with any qualifications or an education. At some point, you're going to feel embarrassed. So you can avoid being educated for a while. But it's like those people who, um, when they were growing up in Jamaica, and instead of going to school, they would bunk school and do all sorts. And then they come to England and they manage to get by on, you know, on um, being savvy. You know, they could like do work under the table. They could, you know, they could get by. All of a sudden now, their education is being called into question when they have to fill in forms, when they have to do things online, when they have to interact with other people. All of a sudden, what they were able to get away with has caught up with them. The education that they were avoiding because they didn't want to be mimicked at school is now facing them as adults. Whereas if they'd faced it, 
the little, little, the little rants at school and got by it and overcame it, they wouldn't be in the position they are now. So, a lot of people, you know, they say, oh, I, I wouldn't do that. You know, oh, you wouldn't catch me doing that. You know, it's pride. What's wrong with doing that, whatever that is? Especially when it's um, based on this sense of superiority or something. You know, there's a lot of people who miss out on life because of pride, because they're so worried about what people say about them. These are the people that need validation all the time. They need, pe they need to be admired. They need people to look up to them. But it's really weird because even people you see in the media or on television, they are always people who are true to themselves, even though we're horrified by it, even though sometimes we wouldn't do what they do. They are the ones that people actually respect when they're open. I saw a lady today and she was doing an advert. And I remember when she was on YouTube and she was just, she used to be quite crass and loud and, you know, and I used to think, bloody hell, should the on TV now doing adverts? Do you know what I mean? So it's about being true to yourself and not worrying what people think or what people say, because pride is restrictive. So what else have I got here? It's what makes people blame others for their mistakes instead of being accountable. People who worry about what people, other people think of them but always blame others for their mistakes. Um, and they'll never accept responsibility for their part in whatever is going on. People who have too much pride live in the fear of getting found out. They exhibit a false persona. Pride makes people choose incompatible partners because they're too embarrassed about the ones they really love. I mean, you'll find some people, because they don't want to be laughed at if they fancy somebody who might be a bit overweight, wears glasses, you know, not the traditional beauty. They get embarrassed and they don't really want to be seen out with that person, but they love that person. But rather than go for the person who they love who might be imperfect or not the westernized version of beauty they take on a westernized ver version of beauty and they're not happy and that's to do with pride how people perceive them and it's the same with people who don't want to date outside their race a lot of them they don't want to date outside their race because they don't want to be embarrassed it's their pride why they don't not that they don't want to but they don't want to be criticized or you know, be the focus of attention. So they prefer just to go with the flow so that nobody will know. Well, just say they don't draw attention to themselves, put it that way. Um, if pride is preventing us from being authentic, owning up to our mistakes, then we will never improve who we are. Pride leads to not admitting, admitting our failures. Pride can also make you demean other people or feel an aversion to others. Pride prevents self-growth instead of, instead you want to compete and defeat other people. And you'll find that people who um, have a sense of pride, who are worried about their appearance, they're very competitive and it's unnecessary. Excessive pride prevents growth. It becomes too comfortable to recognize our shortcomings or our mistakes. If you're too proud to admit a mistake, it means that when the person is wrong, they will stubbornly continue to claim that she or he is right. So you can't even tell them that they're wrong because it's almost like a disgrace for them if they're wrong. And this is what they need to get away from. These feelings of disgrace, humiliation, um, embarrassment, you know, being made to look a fool. Sometimes you need to behave like a fool sometimes. You'd be surprised how liberating it is. You don't always have to be, you know, strict and prim and proper and do things the right way. 
Sometimes it's good to go out of your comfort zone, not feel too comfortable, not feel too complacent. Do something unusual. Because it really is restricting when pride stops you from doing things that you really want to do. So, um, final words, try owning up to your mistakes. You will find it liberating. Don't prevent yourself from doing what you want to do just because you're afraid of how it looks to other people. No one is perfect. Remember that when you're trying to create a perfect image for others. Um, try not to believe that people will attack you or sneer at you if you make a mistake. Because you have to remember there was probably a period in time when that happened. That period is not now. You're a different person now. You're not a victim now. So you can actually handle it. If somebody takes the pee out of you, you just blow it off. But a lot of people, they can't stand somebody taking the pee out of them and they react. And I guess it all depends how they do it and, you know, that it's not too sensitive because we have to remember when um, Will Smith hit Chris Rock. Was it Chris Rock or the other guy? Um, because he made a jab at his wife. That was his pride that was hurt. He's defending his wife. Could he have handled it a different way? Yes, of course he could. But you'll have some people, you know, you, sometimes you just have to learn. Is this worth reacting to? You need to choose your battles. Not everything somebody says to you that might make you feel embarrassed or small or um, humiliated demands that they need to be murdered or beaten up or, you know, something bad should happen to them. And that is, the, that is the reason why I'm doing this video, because especially in the Caribbean, pride is what causes death in a lot of cases. And it's unnecessary. We need to check ourselves. Who are we? We're just human beings. We, you know, we should have an air of humility. What makes us think that we're better than anybody else? What makes us think that we shouldn't be humiliated or embarrassed at no time at all? So you will find that so many people make mistakes all the time, so you're in good company. So all I can say to close this video is that, as the book says, the good book says, pride comes before a fall. It's not a good quality to have. It's good to have pride in your work, pride in your appearance, but when that pride takes over, your whole life and it and it runs your life so that you can't be who you were destined to be, then that is a problem. And that's all I've got to say for now. Bye-bye.